is our next speaker. Um, he has taken uh, many steps and, and has been in jail a lot of few times. And like he said once, prior to the election, uh, Father Jerry, you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, prior to the election in 2000, uh, 2000 that was the election, the presidential election here. Um, even when while he was in Miami, he I think he was put in jail so that he could not go and motivate the people of Haiti to go vote Democrat. And part in Haiti as well, but he was in Haiti prior to um, the candidates um, um, becoming a, um, or going to become a candidate for president. He was put in jail so that will prevent him from inciting the people uh, to vote Democratic, but of course the people of Haiti are never fooled. And he has taken a stand for the people of Haiti, even when he was handcuffed on his way to jail, he was crying, Viva Aristide, Viva Democracy, and not too many people have the courage to do that. So it is my pleasure and a great honor for me to introduce Father Gerard Rogers. With your permission and with the permission of the three hands, Sister Maria, Maria and Mary, and also my friends, brothers, Dr. Paul Farmer and uh, Ahoka Brian Concanon, allow me to see, please, to stay seated because. Um, after returning to Miami, once I returned to Miami on Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I'm going back for another chemo treatment. And I've been advised to take it easy. So that's the reason why tonight, if you allow me, I'll be trying to be short. I have a lot of things to say. I've seen you. I was on my way in Haiti last time I've seen you. And uh, coming from South Africa at that time. So uh, since I've been going through hardship here and in Haiti. And uh, since January 29, with uh, your help, your prayers, your activities, and also uh, with the risk some of you have taken from me, and the list is very long because of all your work and here tonight. So uh, I thank you so much. Uh, with your permission again. I'd like to go on the list, it's so long, but uh, uh, Dr. Paul Farmer was talking about me and saying, that, and reminding me of I talked to you, of the day he stayed in jail. With his permission, I would like to know that right away, it was not an easy day for him, because uh, he dared to enter the jail. We managed to go to the upper floor. We managed to enter one of the rooms cell and hid ourselves there with the permission of another prisoner. And uh, Dr. Paul wanted to get some specimen for me was not easy. So uh, the other prisoner trying to uh, 
keep the door closed and meanwhile with his needles he tried to get my blood but you know when you are uh, such a great physician like him and you have many nurses under you just come and <laughs> nurse to the bed and that day I went to the pool trying to get my blood and he could not find my veins <laughs> He was nervous, I was nervous. What? How are you doing? That's in the Oh my god. I was trying to challenge you with that. I got the blood. And at the time, and the nurses coming to take my blood and I did not resist but uh, it has been very difficult for them to find my pain <laughs> and I think that if you have been doing this every day it's difficult for you I know now what Dr. Farmer has been going through because uh, it's, it was difficult so thank you very much Paul but finally as I said we got the blood out. And Paul got the words out. And thanks to him and thanks to the other members of the medical corps, I am alive in front of you tonight. The least of all of you who helped me out, who helped the Haitian people, the list is very long. But there are some names I would like to uh, call right now. Haitian Action Committee, you don't know the great impact of your work on us prisoners while we are in Haiti, we listen to the radio, what you have done. And every time some of you take to the streets or write letters or have done some advocacy work that impact in public, I'm telling you, we prisoners, political prisoners, we are happy, we are happy in jail, and uh, we feel like uh, developing more resistance in uh, our hope was kept alive. So thank you very much for all the great work you have done. I won't call in, but tonight I don't see Pierre as we show on the podium with me, but Maria is here, Pierre is here. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, as I say, uh, the list is long. And tonight I'm supposed to uh, address you about the resistance and the occupation. I tried to uh, briefly come to the subject, uh, but uh, on the list, I cannot forget KBFA. Every time something is happening, KBFA has been there alive with me. Thanks to Dennis, thanks to Kevin, thanks to uh, all the doctors, all the medical staff, friends of the DIH. Thanks to Sister Maria, Sister Bonnie, <laughs> Sister Stella, well. <laughs> Sister 
She has a good message. She says, the lady's right here. She dared to enter the jail and took my picture. And the guard said, no, don't do that. She did it again. <laughs> now, as I tried to pick up the camera from there, she took the camera and put it deep in the right in back. The guard looked at me and looked at him, and that was the end of it. <laughs> so there are so many of you who dare to do things keep the resistance going on in jail. Thank you so much. And also, uh, during the time of jail, they have kidnapped the head cook of our uh, canteen, of our food program. And uh, it has been very hard. But uh, thanks to uh, the resistance, Thanks, thanks to the uh, Margaret Trust and the Wadi Foundation, the board members and all of that, we still are feeding the people the best we can. We thought by now the number would diminish because we have elected President Trevor, but uh, the government is honorable to feed as many people as possible as we will. No job yet, so no food. It's very hard time for the people. And so uh, instead of all our numbers, the effort for our numbers to increase at the food program, the number unfortunately are increasing. So um, because there is no alternative, wherever you can find food in port points, you will travel two miles, three miles, five miles, spend a day for your hot meal. So wherever it is. So uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, I cannot forget also uh, uh, many members of Congress who helped me out in this uh, difficult situation, in that difficult situation, and uh, close to us, a congresswoman, a Waters, and she was very good in her letters, in uh, her speeches, her support in general has been very powerful. And the other congresswoman also, such as Barbara Lee and many others. And uh, also, uh, we are lucky to have uh, some Republican members joining the team at the end. And uh, they were able together to help us put pressure on the State Department, on the Bush administration in general, and uh, getting out of jail on January 29 and put me in a plane to uh, Miami uh, for uh, health treatment. So uh, there are many other people like to say thanks. And uh, I cannot forget uh, the IJDH lawyers and I cannot forget uh, the, the, the relatives, parents of my marriages, Tom and uh, all of them. And uh, I couldn't forget people from Amnesty International. It's, they have been fantastic. And uh, many other groups, they have been fantastic. Yeah, it is true that uh, 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 some people prefer not to come out openly, but for those of you who did come out openly and give you time, and uh, tonight, allow me to thank you, and it has been great. Uh, as I said, due to illness, I won't be able to speak long tonight. Uh, Talking about resistance, uh, we need 
to develop, to keep developing as the ladies showed us on the document day, strong resistance in Haiti and here for the, our people, particularly the poorest one, they can have hope, they can have uh, services. And uh, we appreciate so much the work done by the great team who left here and went to Haiti on, after July 6, 2005, after the massacre in Sinai Square. And I uh, cannot forget those brothers and sisters mentioned by Marilyn earlier. And uh, Dave, and uh, 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 Tim, and many other, many people. I cannot forget. It was really great. You have done a great job, I think. Your solidarity, your support, has allowed us to develop resistance in Haiti. Resistance to the services we keep giving, offering, providing to the people in Haiti. Because of your support, because of your solidarity, through the hardship we are undergoing in Haiti, we are able to assist many, many brothers and sisters. So we are giving services while people are under fire. It is great to keep the movement alive. For those of you uh, who know how tough it is for us today, prayer has been a great tool also for our resistance movement. And uh, staying alive, good health, thanks to the medical teams in Haiti, uh, staying alive while we are trying hard to bring back to more rest in Haiti and uh, the medical teams have played a great role to the resistance movement. And also uh, those of us who risk ourselves to take the streets, march, that has been the hardest part of it. How to practice non-violent movement in a country where the government officials use violence to uh, stop us from enjoying our human rights. So it's a difficult task. We try to decide we have, we need to get permit before we have any demonstration. We went to the police station to get a permit. We were unable. They turned us around. And uh, when finally we decided to take the street, non violently, and uh, they sent their squad to our demonstration and uh, in cold blood killing people, peaceful marchers. So uh, I have witnessed that. And uh, I remember the big role played by Kevin Pina and some of the marchers. He risked himself so much, his brother, when in front of some of the killers, he tried to take the pictures. It has been a terrible job. And uh, in so many times, he saved some of, some of us marchers. Because uh, the killers were posted to shoot on us, and then Kevin and I were taking pictures, and then they changed their mind. They moved to other places. So Kevin was chasing them. So I was so afraid. So free for Kevin for the risk he took in many of these demonstrations. And uh, the resistance movement in Haiti must be kept alive until total victory. 
Uh, we voted President Prima, but uh, he is very slow moving along to help people obtain the return of President Amnesty to uh, provide services uh, to the poor ones, to uh, give job back to those who were fired on just rate and uh, he's not moving fast. And also uh, when we see that many of the people who have been assigned and they are part of those who have requested us in the So uh, we support, I support President Deva, but I have to find a way to let him know frankly that things cannot stay the way it is in Haiti. And uh, Apparently, he is under big pressure, big pressure from uh, the sector within the international community. And uh, he's, he knows what he's supposed to do, but he doesn't have the backup to satisfy the people of Haiti. So uh, we have to keep the resistance movement in good shape. So uh, President Riva can, uh, his government can move in the direction we voters wanted him, want him to be followed. And uh, briefly on, uh, on resistance, I have to say that in prison, we developed great resistance also. And uh, I ask, I encourage my brothers and sisters who are in jail not to go on hunger strike, to stay alive all the time and fight back. It is true, at a certain time, I had myself to go on a hunger strike. I started a hunger strike. And uh, it was being spread throughout the whole prison. Yes, the hunger strike was being followed at the Pentecostal National in August, while I was there, August 2005. And, uh, but it was a fake one. We eat bread, we drink water, we agree to that. We were not going to let us, to let us uh, starve to death because uh, uh, the de facto government official at that time would enjoy to see us prisoners being uh, starved to death. So, uh, uh, we rejected, we refused to accept the food. The food brought to us by our relatives. But that day, we had an outbreak in our water. Some hidden sodas in the cell. Then uh, we we didn't drink uh, any of them, so we went on the site. And uh, the message went out. And that's what we wanted at that time because uh, we didn't have the support for a public strike. And plus, in Haiti, at the moment that the message is done, I would advise the prisoners not to go on the strike like uh, PM, Prime Minister, even the team has done. I could not talk to the uh, to President, to Prime Minister the team while we were in jail because I was forbidden for that. 
even when we are in the same, same house. But we manage to guide each other when we are almost every day. We guide each other. And uh, try to discourage him about the congressman. And uh, he was in the settlement with me and with his military and many others. He is a great man carrying a Congress right for such a while to resist uh, any prison in such a way for Congress right. But uh, right now, his health is still, according to the report that we see, is still in poor shape due to the long Congress right he had undertaken. So, uh, the best sense, uh, I wish that people who listen to us who want peaceful resistance. It seems that it's more powerful in him to organize a peaceful movement than on a government of the fact of government, then uh, to take arm and fight. Because they were merciless, killing people, and it's an occasion for them to kill us easily. So uh, I think that uh, the peaceful movement had more impact than the violent Too many youngsters have been ill while they try to fight back with the minister and uh, fight back with the, the Haitian police and uh, with the government officials. And uh, at a certain time, they had to run away, they could have stayed home, they had to go to the countryside. But those of us who try to keep the non-violent movement, even though we have been killed, we were not killing people. We keep marching, marching, until our destiny is now, now, now. So, uh, I'm going back to Haiti as soon as uh, my doctors allow me. And uh, after my treatment, probably I may stay for a while. And then I hope by November I should go back for good in Haiti. I always say that as a non violent resistant person, I would prefer to stay in jail, in Haiti, and uh, stay in the world. I want to stay on the ground in Haiti. That's my approach. And I remember once when I said that to jail, jail of prisoners disagree with me. Well, they, we had a big argumentation in jail about that. We're talking about when you can resist staying in jail and keep the pressure on. I thought it was the best way uh, to fight uh, the government, the de facto government in Haiti. But uh, uh, it's not easy. Uh, right now, I have an anxiety, I have a board. I, I have lost the reality. That's the reason why tonight I was so happy to watch the documentation. Because uh, uh, we don't have enough information about what's really going on in Haiti. So uh, whenever we have fresh and true direct information like the one we have tonight, I think that helps us a lot understand the misery, the suffering, of the people. So uh, we are on the occupation, yes, still. Occupation, as we see, doesn't get rid of peace. 
is still there. Occupation as a theory of hunger. Occupation as a theory of violence. You see the way uh, the people start intruding on innocent people. Occupation has not got infrastructure. Occupation has not facilitated the health system to offer. Occupation has not facilitated the universities. In the case of Haiti, you see that uh, as Avocat Brian was mentioning, uh, the university of uh, Maria was mentioning the, the university built by President Aristide has been occupied by the minister troops. So the people are in need of uh, universities. Instead of uh, having more, they are taken away from them. So it's unfair. So occupation is not the proper answer. I think uh, President Kumar once said while he was visiting South America, he said that uh, destroying the tanks, destroying the big uh, weaponry, give us tractors, give us trucks, give us what we need to help us build a big. So I think uh, this is the best way you want to act. These brothers and sisters in Haiti, uh, they need to be out of the misery, out of poverty. That's what we need. They need uh, to enjoy the human and basic rights. That's what they need. But the way it's heading in Haiti, with the occupation from the international sector, it's not in that direction. So, uh, well, we need to do something about it. Uh, the sooner the better. And these days, uh, we see that uh, people are also desperate that uh, they are going after, in some places, they are calling names of the occupants. Go away. We will start. We don't call them to stay. We call them to stop. That's mean that these soldiers are there as tourists. They are doing something positive for the people. So uh, I hope that uh, we could move from the military force to a uh, constructive force in Haiti. And so that way, uh, we could uh, assist the people. So, my uh, brothers and sisters, tonight I am happy to come in front of you to talk, but uh, you know that I observe that I am a little bit slow down because I am under medication. It's not easy when you go into chemotherapy to be around and talk and talk because uh, uh, I experienced that last time, and I went along and dropped out, and right away I went to the people to have a treatment, and I needed to develop big resistance at that time too, to survive with people to have me. And uh, uh, those of you who are qualified with your good health, use it wisely. And, uh, and remember, our people in the US, our people in Haiti, our people in America need you. And uh, the last time I was here, I, put, I insisted about that uh, in America, in the continent of America, we should have no more misery. We are intelligent enough. We have resources enough. And uh, to transform America and make it a beautiful continent. But so far, 
So far, there is a lack of goodwill from those who are in account. They don't understand. And uh, uh, you heard, uh, you remember last time also I was here, we talked about uh, uh, no support for uh, the de facto government. We call for the resignation of many extreme right uh, advocates in the Bush First Amendment uh, administration. And uh, now some of them are gone. If you heard about Martin Oyega, it's gone. Arnold is gone. Bolton, you know where he is, where he is right now. So uh, I think uh, uh, you have to keep the pressure on. You have uh, to keep participating in your system, in your democratic system, and get rid of those who are not uh, listening, paying attention to your power. Uh,
It's a blessing to help you continue on and uh, also understand that for those of us who believe something we shall be together in happiness with God. Thank you so much.